Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from CNM. This is video C that focuses on the capillaries. The capillaries are, of course, the smallest blood vessels in the body, and they can be so small that they are only a cell layer thick, so just the endothelium, and with a diameter that is less than the diameter of a red blood cell. Remember, that's why it's so important for these red blood cells to be flexible to where they can literally fold up and pass through these tiny capillaries. Capillaries are also very, very short, by the way, very, very short. And I think all of you know by now that because the capillaries are so thin, um, gas exchange can easily occur as well as nutrient waste exchange. And when we talk about the circulation in the capillaries, we might mention the term microcirculation. Now, depending on where they're located and what their functions are, we're going to see different kinds of capillaries. And so we're looking at three pictures here, and they're shown from left to right, um, from the least leaky to the most leaky. So let's start with the continuous capillaries. These are capillaries made up of our simple squamous epithelial layer, called the endothelial layer, part of the tunica and tema, um, sitting on some basement membrane showing here. And in between the squamous cells, we have what we call the intercellular clefts, through which some particles, small particles, can possibly move. So not all molecules are going to always be able to make it through the um, through the uh, cell membrane of cells. Some particles are actually going to take advantage to pass in between the cells. But as you can see, that might be quite difficult. Not every particle molecule uh, ion is going to be able to do that. So we see, especially in skin and muscles, our continuous skeletal muscles, that is, our continuous types of capillaries. But I should add to this also the brain. And in the brain, we're going to see that we actually have tight junctions between the endothelial cells. Remember the blood-brain barrier? So we're not going to see these, um, these clefts present or very, very few in the brain, if any at all. So I, I wanted to add that, that that's the continuous capillaries are present there as well, but no clefts, no intercellular clefts. Our next type of capillary we call fenestrated because they have little holes in, in the walls of the endothelial cells. In Latin, fenestra literally means window. So this means window because these holes are covered with thin, thin little membranes. Clearly, this is going to be a, a slightly leakier capillary, and so we're going to find this in areas of absorption, such as in the small intestine, where we need to absorb our food particles that have been digested by means of enzymes already, and so they're small enough to where they can make it through um, out of the cap. Um, I'm sorry, out of the lumen of our small intestine into our leaky capillaries here. And we are also going to see this kind of capillary in the kidneys, more specifically in the blood vessels that, or the capillaries that we find in the kidneys called the glomeruli. This is where these are little balls of capillary beds. There's like a million in each one of the kidneys, and we're going to learn a lot about them. But these are capillary beds that are pre-leaky, fenestrated capillaries, such that the blood that passes through the kidneys will be filtered out to eventually create urine. Finally, we get to the really, really, really leaky capillaries where we see huge intercellular uh, gaps, big enough such that our white blood cells and red blood cells can leave for instance, the red bone marrow and enter the circulation. We also find sinusoids in the liver. And because the liver, as we'll see, needs to have access to a lot of the, the blood um, ingredients, I'll just call them for now, because 
I think you know that the liver is an important um, detoxifying organ in our body amongst many other functions it has. And then the lymphoid tissues also have um, sinusoids such that many of our white blood cells can emigrate so that these sinusoids can carry out their functions, whether it's in the liver or in the red bone marrow or the lymphoid tissues, we're going to see that they have a bigger lumen such that the blood flow will slow down. This then wraps up our discussion of the capillaries. Next in line is the venous system.